Faceless, we were born for greatness. We're not nameless, we're not faceless, we were born for greatness. We're not nameless, we're not faceless, we were born for greatness. They say that I'm reckless, because I'm relentless. They spit on my face and crush on my name and take in my life and vengeance. Yeah, you can try and blame us and try and take what's sacred. But we're not nameless, we're not faceless, we were born for greatness.
to smell what the rock is cooking. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the WWE Wrestling Talk Show with Reese for Rock Jones and without any technical difficulties this time to bring you our reactions to WWE Extreme Rules. The one that in the air when WWE goes extreme. So let's jump in here. With the two matches which took place on the kickoff show. I'll just breeze past them. Oh, we will literally breeze past them. First of all, Andre Cien Almas defeated Saint Carla. And then the next match took a very surprising turn. I won't call it a surprising turn. It was a six man. Tables match or six man tag teams tables match between Sanity and the New Day. And what are we expecting this kind of match? Well, chaos. chaos. Whenever Sanity is around, chaos will follow. Exactly, because the winning team of the match were. With uh, Eric Young delivering a uh, diving elbow through a table on the Cody Kingston. The winners were Sanity. Not surprising, but now, on to the main match card. The main match card started off with the Raw Tag Team Championships. When the Deleter of Worlds, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, the final team of Bo Dallas and Pratis Axel. Now, this was a Interesting match. It was, it, w it went back and forth for a while. <sighs> Matt Hardy and Blue White attempted their, uh, what is it, Sister Abigail into a uh, Twist of Fate double team move. Yeah. Only to be caught out with Hardy going into Wyatt. And then to be hit with the elevated whip rass by Bo Dallas to make the B team, the A team of Monday Night Raw and the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Yes, you heard correctly. They are the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, next. We stuck with Monday Night Raw when uh, Finn Balor defeated Baron Corbin. I'm not going to say anymore because this match was completely pointless. It was pretty hard. You might as well not have that, have that match in the last card. Next we had Carmella defending the SmackDown Women's Championship against Asuka with James Ellsworth suspended above for winning a sarcade. The best year I've had. <laughs> This, however, did not quite work out as it was supposed to, because no. Ellsworth dropped, was attempting to drop friends from the cage to help Asuka 
including the pep spray from the week before. Yes. When that didn't quite work out, he had, he pick locked the cage door. Yes. Only to find himself hanging above, hand hanging outside of the cage, half suspended in the air. They lowered, they lowered the cage to try to get Ellsworth back in, and as if that wasn't bad enough, it proved to be a distraction for Asuka because Asuka went off on Ellsworth. Only for Kamala to push Asuka headfirst into uh, the arcade. To pick up a free count and once again survive. As the night will not yet be over for James Ellsworth. Huh? Oh yeah. But oh, yeah. before before we go into that, let's think. Winning the Royal Rumble match. Losing the championship match at WrestleMania and losing a few other championship opportunities. Where have we heard that before? Yes, where have we? Well, that would be featured in the next match because uh, following on from that, they went on to the United States championship match when Jeff Hardy would defend against Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, where do I go here? Where do you? Uh, both superstars make their way back down to the lane. Or down to the lane. Jeff Hardy hands the championship to the referee. And as the referee turns, before the bell has even run, Nakamura delivers his new finishing manoeuvre, the low blow, onto Jeff Hardy. The bell then goes after the referee checking that Hardy can still go. Yeah. Kinshasa straight away, one, two, three, we have a new United States champion. But the night wasn't over yet for Jeff Hardy. And as if that wasn't bad enough, well, Shinsuke Nakamura was, uh, let's say, celebrating. Randy Orton's music hits. Yes, I came back after my uh, knee injury. Yes, Randy Orton had not been seeing WWE since. Was it just after WrestleMania? And instead of coming down and uh, attacking Shinsuke Nakamura, he makes Hardy's Never Legions even worse by attacking him. Yes, I low blowed Jeff Hardy. And then the, the, uh, in the process. And then again, often on the following night of SmackDown, when Jeff Hardy was having his rematch clause for the uh, United States Championship, he had the match won only for, J- for Randy Orton to be the match. Yeah, I actually realised that I even nearly missed the Jeff Hardy ear off. So, there we go there. There's going to be something built there. We've had those two in matches over the years. Oh yeah. oh yeah. So we go from a sack cage to a steel cage next. Where oh, yeah. Kevin Owens has been running away from Braun Strowman. Except this time there was no one to run when they would have faced each other in the steel cage. This match mostly dominated by Braun Strowman. Yeah, Ke- Kevin Owens tried to Run like a scalded dog out of the cage a couple of times. JR reference that. And the, the, the climax of the match was weird 
to say yeah, the least. Really. Uh, if I remember correctly, Braun Strowman was down. Yep, Kevin Owens was falling up to the cage. Yeah, Braun Strowman, Kevin Owens and Matt to get Strowman down. Oh, Tiger. Yeah. No, sorry. It was, oh, I'm sorry. He's handcuffed Strowman to the top rope on one side of the ring. Strowman then fucked out of that. I think he ripped the handcuff off. Yes, yeah, because uh, Kevin Owens took too much time with in. Yeah. And then we get to the top of the cage. And instead of tossing. Kevin Owens back into the ring. Braun Strowman throws him off of the steel cage through the announce table in a similar kind of fashion to what The Undertaker did to mankind off the top of Hell in a Cell 20 years ago. Except that means whilst Braun Strowman came out of the mat as uh, on top, or as the better man. Technically, it's a win for Braun for Kevin Owens. Yes, and as you said earlier, that move cost Braun Strowman the match. However, these two will face off again at SummerSlam. With with the money in the bank contract on the line. Now where have we heard that before? Edge and Mr. Kennedy. I thought it was Edge and Mr. Anderson. Oh yeah, I'll say again, Edge and Mr. Anderson. Or, or Kennedy, whichever promotion you watched in then. Yeah. Next, we move back to SmackDown when the Bludgeon Brothers were supposed to, I'm going to stress the word, supposed to take on Team Hell No for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Except early in, earlier in the night, Team Hell No got jumped by the Bludgeon Brothers. From behind, they, they smashed King's knee into the, into a door with uh, wooden mallets. Ow. So this effectively turned into a two on one handicap match. However, towards the end of the match, Kane did make an appearance. Yes, because it's put in a massive plaster. However, unfortunately, the damage was already done, and, and the Bludgeon Brothers were able to retain the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. So, it looks like the Bludgeon Brothers walk away with the titles for now. Next, we had Vespia versus Vespia, when Bobby Lashley took on Roman Reigns. And let's just say it was a very, very match that match that you couldn't really call. It was a match I couldn't call. It was a match that went a few different ways. We had some suplexes. <laughs> not to be well, not to be confused with Suplex City. We had a Superman punch in the ring for on near fall. Yeah. We had a Superman punch performed from the top rope. Yeah. But in the end, it was Roman Reigns who went for a spear, only to be caught in a, in a spear from Bobby Lashley. And for Lashley to pick up a free count. However, the reason for this was made clear pretty much the next night on uh, Raw. Raw when, uh, well, the previous night on the of Extreme Rules, Kurt Angle announced that uh, 
if uh, Brock Lesnar turn up on Monday night to negotiate who he would defend the championship against at SummerSlam or he would be stripped of the Universal Championship. Whilst Brock Lesnar didn't turn up, Paul Heyman did. So that means that Brock Lesnar's championship is safe? Question mark, question mark, question mark. So what happened then is we had two triple threat matches featuring Bobby Lashley, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre and Elias. So the winners of these two triple threat matches Roman Reigns and Elias, oh, sorry, Roman Reigns and Lashley, I mean, would then face each other this past week on Raw, with a winner facing uh, Lesnar at SummerSlam. Yeah. The winner of that match, unsurprisingly, was Roman Reigns. So, for the, for feels like the untinth time, we get Brock Lesnar. This is Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Was he having times in the ride? Well, we had it at the Royal Rumble. Sorry, we had it at WrestleMania. We had it at the Greatest Royal Rumble, and we had it at WrestleMania a few years ago. So it's it's like the fourth or fifth time we've had this match. Next, we had the Extreme Rules match for the Raw Women's Championship when Alexa Bliss would defend against former champion Nia Jax in a No Rules match, effectively. Mickey James would accompany Alexa Bliss. I mean, sorry. <coughs> I mean, uh, yeah, Alexa Bliss. Natalia with the company Nia Jax. Yes. The third wheel in this match, however, was sitting at ringside, was Ronda Rousey, who sat at ringside. Uh, let's, Mickey James and Alexa Bliss took advantage of the no rules apply stipulation by almost double teaming Nia Jax at certain points. They went after Natalia. This set Ronda Rousey to jump the barricade and get and, and inject herself involved. There was a moment where it looked like Nia Jax might pick up a victory here. Except once again, Nikki James made the difference and allowed Alexa Bliss to attain the Raw Women's Championship. The next night on Raw, however, she would be boasting her mouth off, running her mouth, blah de blah de blah. Until we hear the until we see the rowdy one waiting on the ramp for her. Well, she came through the crowd. Technically, she was still on suspension from Monday Night Raw, but she didn't care. She came running through the crowd, caught Alexa Bliss on top of the ramp, got a... She got a bit of a beating, as far as I say Mickey James did. Kurt Angle came down, and because... Ronda Rousey had violated her suspension. He added an extra week onto it. However, and this is not to this is not to tell kids that they can do something bad and get rewarded for it. Ronda Rousey was also awarded a Raw Women's Championship match at SummerSlam against Alexa Bliss. As long as he didn't attack Bliss again. So I will say this for you, 
Miss Alexa. Enjoy that championship whilst you've got it, because in about four weeks you can kiss it goodbye. Yeah, and the same goes for me as well. That championship is going home with the rowdy one. And quite frankly, I would be amazed if it doesn't. Yeah, same here. So, where do we go from the Next, we go to the WWE Championship match between AJ Styles and Rusev Day. So, it was, yep, AJ was the Championship because of the Rusev Day match. Yeah. Um, this was a better match than I thought it was going to be. We had, of course, we had Styles doing all the uh, high flying pot stuff. He, Aiden English attempted to get involved or did get involved a few times. We had a belly to belly overhead suplex. Again, suplex. On the, f- on, on the floor from uh, Rusev to uh, Styles. A mat kick for the near fall. But then we had the accolade and style, but Styles was able to get to the rope. The match concluded with Rusev colliding with an exposed turnbuckle, which Aiden Ingus had uh, uncovered. And Styles then performed a 450 splash, but Russo was able to kick out. However, he was not able to kick out of a phenomenal forearm, which followed it, which means still WWE Champion is AJ Styles. And they seem to be starting to tease a breakup between Russo and Aiden English. Some, some WWE fans will be the worst thing in the world. Uh, you can say it might be the first thing in the world, but it might work better without Aiden English. Yeah. So the final match on the card yeah. was the 30 minute Iron Man match for the Intercontinental Championship. Rollins would challenge Shawn Michaels' wannabe, <laughs> otherwise known as Dolph Ziggler. Shawn Michaels' wannabe. <laughs> who would be accompanied by the Diesel wannabe, <laughs> otherwise known as uh, Drew McIntyre. And we would. Yeah. This would be half an hour. Most falls in that time wins. Falls come. By pinfall, some miss and count out or disqualification. So, the first four went to. The first four was. Uh, I was went to Seth Rollins after Rollins did a turnbuckle power bomb. Yeah. Onto Sinclair and pin Sinclair with a. to get the pinfall. The second fall was all, would also go to uh, uh, Seth Rollins after the curb stomp of stomp, whatever he calls it these days. But then Seth Rollins would go free and left when Drew McIntyre decided to attack him. Which would also, which would then get Drew McIntyre ejected from ringside. However, it did allow Ziggler to pick up a pinfall to get it back to 3-1. Yeah. Then we got a sweet chin music slash super kick to make it 3-2. Yeah. Then we got Ziggler throwing Rollins into the Lynn post and then zigzag to make it free all. And then in a typical heel move, Ziggler pinned Rollins using the ropes to 
to make it fall free. Which means that Tom Sigler is still... Wait, we haven't finished going through it yet. In the dying moments of the uh, mats, Rollins will execute a ca catapult into the corner on Ziggler and being able to pin him to make it for all and, was, and went for the stop however the time limit expired forcing the match to a for all draw at the end of 30 minutes however Kurt Angle made his way out stating we would not end the night like that and put the match into sudden death overtime. Drew McIntyre would make a quick appearance on the apron to distract Rollins. We would then get a zigzag from Don Ziggler and the one, two, three. So means at least for now, Don Ziggler is still Intercontinental Champion. Well, around about that time frame, we don't know the exact date, so the question is, will he lose the championship at SummerSlam, or will he... However, that does it for Extreme Rules. Before we leave you, we do have some other information to bring you. After being exiled from WWE three years ago due to some inappropriate language yeah. coming out, WWE have officially reinstated Hulk Hogan into the WWE Hall of Fame. Well, I think we, I said I don't think the superstars, even the uh, black superstars, are denying that Hogan belongs into the Hall of Fame. But uh, whether he does uh, anything else with the company, they may be eh, about it. Yeah. The message about the message to this is: be careful what you say. You never know when you might be recorded. Then, this past Monday night on Raw, Stephanie McMahon made an appearance, yay, yay everyone, <laughs> to announce that on Sunday, October 28th, WWE will be holding the first ever All Women's Pay-Per-View. By the name of Evolution. And uh, no, but, um, no, we're not referencing um, Triple H's match of the name of Batista. Yes. Three years ago, a hashtag went wild with Give D was the chance. Yeah. That grew into the women's evolution. That, that grew into a women's Iron Man match. A women's Hell in a Cell match. The women's Elimination Chamber match. The women's Elimination Chamber. The women's Money in the Bank ladder match. The women's Royal Rumble. Now we get a women's all pay per view. Next, there are still rumours of women's tag team championships. Which could be introduced here. But as far as we know, confirmed matches for this event are the Raw Women's Championship will be defended, the SmackDown Women's Championship will be defended, the NXT Women's Championship will be defended, the 
United Kingdom Women's Championship will be defended or decided at the time and the 2018 Mayon Classic final will be determined. And well, it's going to be a very interesting pay per view, a very interesting brand new pay per view, see how it's all going now. Yes, and along with the superstars of the present and the future, we also have women of the past, including so far confirmed WWE Hall of Famers, Lita. Trish Stratus and Beth Phoenix. Should be an interesting a lineup. We shall keep you up to date as more information comes out and of course bring you the finalised maps card and our thoughts of the actual show when it happens. So until then, he's been Rob Jones and he's been Sean and Randy Smith. We will see you soon for the Summer Slam pre-show. Until then, goodbye. Bye.